Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess today. We're playing e4 as per usual. My opponent responds with e5, so we're going to play knight to f3 here, putting pressure on that pawn, and then d6, a Philidor defense. Named after the French player Francois André Danican Philidor. Uh, just some, you know, a fun fact. We play d4 here, striking at the center, and they take inwards. We take here. This is just a b tech scotch. And when I say b tech, I mean worse for my American audience. I don't know if that's a term used in America. Um, g6 is interesting i'm tempted to think this just is begging me to go knight c3 bishop e3 queen d2 castle queen side h4 h5 and then just crush their castle king when it ends up on g8 because let's be honest they're going to play bishop g7 knight f6 and castle king side and so we have the advantage of just knowing all our opponents next moves i mean it's just so predictable and so so i don't know questionable without this e pawn here i feel because this is a hook. This is just going to be a target for me to attack you with. Okay. Anyway, bishop e3. Um, ooh. Switching it up on me. Okay. We'll play queen d2. Hit me with a little knight d7 for some reason. I guess they didn't want me to take on c6 if they played knight c6. Knight comes to the center now? I'm tempted to play f4 because, I mean, why wouldn't I? Well, knight g4 would be a problem. Because then if I don't want to trade off my dark square bishop, which I definitely don't, I'd have to play... Bishop g1, which might actually be playable. Oh, that'd be so funny. You know what, guys? I'm playing f4. Play knight g4. I'm going to play bishop g1 all the way back. The bishops can uh, can join each other and, uh, you know, sit here looking beautiful. We're going all the way back so that the knight can't take. Now, it wouldn't have lost us a piece if the knight took, for instance, if we just castled and allowed takes, takes. You know, there's no tactic. We can... We can absolutely uh, be on the same amount of material. However, losing the dark square bishop would be drastically uh, damaging to our potential attack because these are weak dark squares. Opponent continues to surprise me though. C6. Fair enough. I'm going to play h3. No, I'm not because queen h4 check. So instead, I'm going to castle queen side first, then play h3. We don't want to be premature because then we could have seen check and I couldn't block with g3. And if I blocked with the bishop, then there would have been no point in me going bishop e1. That would have just been a wasted move as they could trade that knight off. But I think our position looks extremely good uh, already. I mean, we have a beautiful defile. And there are just a few problems in black's position. Like, where is this knight going to go long term? It cannot come back to the center. If it goes to f6, it's going to take up the square for this one. And if this one comes to e7 and this one's on f6, it's just going to be plenty of tempo to, uh, you know, barge through an attack with our pawns when they end up castled this way. C6 makes it a little less likely they're going to end up castled queenside. But I've always thought there's something quite quite nice about having the bishops just right next to each other. Or, for instance, the knights right next to each other if we had this knight on b3. It just looks nice. So h3 here is going to be uh, tempo to support g4 as well. So, like, knight f6, basically forced. I mean, knight h6 makes no sense. Then we don't want to go and lurch forward with this e pawn because yes, takes takes, but then the knight jumps into the center, and we open up the bishop again, and we just we give this square um, and also the f5 square for this knight or the bishop. Right now, this pawn is doing a beautiful job of just denying this knight and the bishop uh, access to the game. So we are just going to go ahead and play g4, and this is like really simple stuff. At some point, we'll want to get the bishops off the back rank so the rooks can slide over. But if you castle kingside here, you are sealing your fate uh, to just be absolutely swamped by these pawns. So they play queen c7, which strikes me as strange. I mean, maybe they do want to castle queenside. It would make sense because this is very scary to castle behind. But now, I, I mean, I can play g5. Are you going to play knight h5? I can probably win a pawn on d6 somehow. Or I'm considering the move knight b5, because if you take, we take back, hit the queen, and hit d6. Like, actually, knight here takes, takes. Okay, let's say you move the queen back to d8, for instance. I take here with check. You move. Like, oh, there's part of me that thinks that actually could be really strong. There's another part of me that's saying, what are you doing? Why are you trying to sacrifice a knight? Oh, I'm so tempted, though. I'm actually so tempted now. Once an idea like this gets in my head, I just can't not play it. We're going to go for it. Knight b5. Why not? Why not? Take my knight, please. I'm going to recapture the pawn with tempo on the queen. Tempo on this pawn. We are going to get two pawns 
for the night, material-wise, but hopefully some very intriguing tempo where we can whack a knight on outposted, even, on d6 in the center of the board. And we're going to be able to do that with check, meaning you can't castle. Because, for instance, let's say you castle now, your queen hangs, so you have to move this queen. There are no functional checks. Um, I mean, queen c2 is not what we would refer to as a functional check. That would just blunder the queen. And we're going to take this. And through a combination of the two pawns, plus the extremely improved knight on d6, plus the fact you can't castle, there's an argument to say that there's compensation for this sacrifice. So we take here with check. Now I do have to be careful because I don't have d6 immediately because this rook hangs, although I still could. You know, d6, they take the rook, I take here. I mean, there, there could be something there. Wait just one second. The queen didn't go back to d8. In the calculation I said, okay, if we go for this and the queen goes back to d8, then blah, 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 blah. The queen didn't go back to d8. This here looks very soft. Now you can block with the knight eventually. Ooh, guys. If we take this, for instance, and you played rook takes, ah, oh, then the queen can come back. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. How do we continue the pressure here? I really like the idea. I mean, we could definitely play bishop g2, for instance, and then we are threatening d6, attacking the queen, our queen supports the bishop, attacking the knight. Like, bishop g2 is without a doubt a very decent move. I'm just wondering if there's anything more aggressive we can go for. Like, d6 straight away, hang the rook. I don't know, I don't know. I really like my knight here. Okay, we're playing bishop g2. I think this has to make sense. I mean, I want I want this move d... Uh, I want this move e5. I think I'm now going to play d5, or e5 anyway, sorry. But e5, you can take here, and you're threatening checkmate in one. Ooh, so e5. Yeah, I don't want to let you take here, honestly. So I might have to play king b1. Which wouldn't be heartbreaking, I mean, it's a useful move to play. Yeah, we're just going to play king b1, defend the pawn. Right, there are no problems in my position now, except the slight material deficit. I'm thinking this sacrifice... The engine will say it's dubious, probably. If it doesn't, I'm a genius. But I'm almost certain it will. We are trying to basically... Okay, they move the knight, they move the knight here. I just think this king is so weak. We're trying to use these, these, little, these little things, like the fact they can't castle, the fact our knight's so well positioned, the fact their queen's now sidelined. You know, we've, got, we've now got e5 and complete dominant control of the center if we want. Like, e5, now the knight's not here. Wait, e5, where do you even go? Knight back? Maybe. No, because then I take the bishop. Rook takes and pick this up. We're playing e5. I mean, this was the whole idea of putting the bishop here. We have a knight outposted on d6. There's a quote uh, by Adolf Anderson where he says, if you've got a knight firmly posted on king or queen 6, I believe, which are these two squares, you may go to sleep your game will play itself, uh, which which is kind of seeming true here. Like, this is not a hard move to play. It's just a simple attack the knight. But the, the tactics here, they go back. Don't we just take? Oh, guys, we just removed the defender. Bang. Take the bishop. They have to take here. Otherwise, we're just bringing the knight back to d6. And after they take... We take here with check. If they play this. Do I have some like queen sack? There actually might be some queen sack. Hold up. Because queen takes here. Rook takes. They could go out with check. But I'm thinking we have bishop c5. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We take the knight. If you go here. Check. King here. Takes, takes. Takes with check. Only move. Oh, guys, 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 this is going to be a beautiful finish. Bishop c5. You cannot block with knight because we take the rook and that is mate. You have to move the king. Now, queen sack for the rook and for the knight to then take with check. Your only move is to block with the bishop. Now, either we take the bishop with the rook or we take with the bishop. Guys, we take with the bishop. Look at this. We take with the bishop because now the king cannot move. The rook cannot move. The queen is the only piece left to move. It attacks the rook, so we can't give this check because then they can take. But these two pieces still can't move. I can just defend this. Rook d1, right? 
I also have the move bishop e7, where you either sack your queen or bishop e7, the king moves is the only other legal move. We then go check. And then take this. Oh my goodness, guys, we're completely winning here. I have rook d1 or bishop e7. Bishop e7, there are two legal moves. You take the rook, obviously you're just losing. Bishop e7, king here, we go check. Only legal move, king h6. g5, king h5, check. Oh, guys, we're playing bishop e7. Bishop e7, a discovered check, protecting the rook. The only move is to go up. The dark squares are so weak that when we go check here... You can't, for instance, sack your queen and take the rook because this comes with check. Oh, and they just resign. Either we were going to just pick up the free rook, obviously, or king h6. There might have been something interesting with g5, king h5, bishop f3, king h4. Although I think probably just taking the rook would have been completely winning. Wow. What a game. What an attack. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. 96% accuracy. This game was just crushing. A couple of inaccuracies around here, but we wear that inaccuracy... Uh, Inaccuracy symbol as a badge of honor, of course. All the best moves are inaccuracies. Let's go through that game. So, we saw a Philidor defense, uh, as you can see, Philidor defense here. The only real move is to take. Um, you can play like knight f6. There is a line bishop g4, uh, but that has not been popular since 1858 uh, for obvious reasons, if you know, you know. So, of course, takes, takes, and then g6. This is apparently the Larson variation, named after, I'm assuming, Bent Larson, the American Grandmaster, I believe. Um, so, okay, g6, yeah, it's it's playable, but it's so easy to formulate a game plan against. Knight c3, the bishop moves, develop our bishop, and then, yeah, this is just inaccurate. We're out of master games already. Um, queen e2, very simple stuff. f4 is the best move. Beautiful, they go here, and bishop g1. Now, this, this is, the, this is some fun chess. Bishop g1, f4 and bishop g1 was actually the right idea, which is super... Uh, instructional as well just how important this dark square bishop is because i mean you saw at the end just how important that dark square bishop ended up being imagine we traded it off early we'd have never had that dominance over these squares which i said were going to be weak this is the beauty of um of chess when you talk about it abstractly and conceptually i mean the end of the game you just saw was complete domination on the dark squares with the dark square bishop and as early as this we recognize that let's not give up our dark square bishop because there are a bunch of dark square weaknesses due to this light square pawn complex. It's just, it's so self-evidently works. It's such a beautiful game because it just, like, if you know what you're doing, you can prove that you're right. It's so nice. Anyway, c6. What the hell was c6? Uh, castle's queenside. Knight here. We kick the knight with h3. The knight goes back. Then g4, which was apparently a little... What was the best idea? Okay, knight f3. I still would play g4 any day, super aggressive, and still basically the same evaluation. They don't castle. Now, it likes f5. Wait, this sack was actually the second best move. Oh, guys, yeah, all day I'm playing this. Takes, knight takes, queen comes here, takes with check, king goes across. Oh, I had bishop b5. That is interesting. I don't know why I didn't even think about bishop b5. Bishop b5, you move back. And then I play d6. Okay, bishop b5 was just another way to dislodge the queen off this diagonal. I went for bishop g2. This was one of the inaccuracies, which does make sense. I was kind of thinking about this move for a while. It's a little bit more passive. But the queen moves. I slide the king across. And that's it for inaccuracies. It wanted a3 rather than king b1. Because they do have bishop e6, which would have threatened uh, a mating idea. So, okay, that makes sense. They instead move the knight. d6. The knight moves, takes, takes, remove the defender, they go here, bishop c5, king here, sack the queen, best move, knight takes, rook takes, bishop here, and of course, not taking with the rook, taking with the bishop, um, because let's say they hadn't attacked our rook and they just played a move, this is checkmate, the dark squares absolutely dominated, um, and so after here, bishop e7 was the best move, rook hd1, a close second, as I said, bishop e7, are the best moves to sack because here we go bishop f6, and then again, their best moves to sack because if they go here, there is a mate. Oh, because I can just take the take the rook. And then I'm assuming I go here and take on h7, right? Like, say I do this, it's g5 here and takes on h7. Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd have just won the rook. This move bishop e7 to force the king up to then go check along here and just abuse these dark squares is so nice. I'm very proud um, of this move. Knight to b5 actually being 
objectively sound. This wasn't even an inaccuracy. Yes, F5 was better in this position, uh, supposedly, but the, the knight on D6, I mean, that Anderson quote where we can uh, firmly post our knight on D6, and then, uh, or D or E6, I think he says both, and then just fall asleep. This is, uh, this is the kind of chess you love to see. And uh, yeah, finished in style. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, and keep an eye out on the channel for announcements about the new website that is currently in development. Super excited about it. If you want to play this kind of romantic era inspired attacking chess, um, I'm gonna be coaching people. I mentioned it last video. Just gonna keep mentioning it until the website drops just at the end. If you're not interested at all, click away. But if you are, let me know in the comments um, and I'll put your name on the priority list for one-to-one -one personalized coaching with me. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. That was a beautiful game and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.